So this is the NUUVA. It is a drone with six uh, upwards motors, seven, eight, and then one to go forward. Um, that's the cargo hold. And it will be unmanned. Or it is unmanned. It's interesting. Future of air cargo transport. It's like cutting the human out of the equation. Well, we'll see how it works. This thing looks really heavy now. More helicopters, more drones. The problem with the drones now is that there's so many. The whole propeller thing and the motors that are not as powerful as they should be. So I have to walk down to Airbus, so I might as well give you some uh, sightings as we go today. Uh, this is the military section here. It's, it's kind of weird to see these military things. Just because you, you understand why they're built and how they're being used. But maybe that's just me. So there's a lot of people here today. Um, a, a lot more than yesterday. I'd say probably twice as many. I don't think I showed you this part off. Okay, EH216SS. <laughs> Keep hitting people in the background complaining what a nightmare it was to get here. Now this little baby has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen props. Just to keep it aloft. We definitely need to make more powerful electric motors. I mean, if you're like a young student trying to think about what we need, more powerful electric motors. Like, this is a fully autonomous vehicle, although it gets their seat so they can test it. But we need super powerful motors is what we need. So this is the solid aviation. More military technology there. Innovative air defense. This is the Dassault Falcon. Quite the line to get in to see these machines. More military stuff over here. Even more military stuff over here. Now I think, and this is the A400. I don't really know my military airplanes, but I think this is the A400 from uh, Airbus. The flight display changes every day, so I don't know what's going to be flying today. Yeah, so this is the A400M. Uh -huh. That was the exit I was trying to get through. So this, uh, the A400 is a military transport from Airbus. Very similar to the, I think it's like the C17.
Oh, the entrance is way on the other side. All right. Now, my first day here, there was literally, literally, it was pretty much just myself <laughs> walking down here. And now there is like a ton of people going through here. There's a lot more security here today. Um, I think the, uh, the French Prime Minister is, I think he's gonna be here today. I have to check, but I think so. There's the media center. And you guys have already seen this section now. This little airplane here behind this truck. It's amazing how small this food truck in the US, the food trucks are huge. It's like a little tiny food truck. <laughs> so, this Piaget airplane here, it is actually an air ambulance. Had a good talk with the guy yesterday and I'll try to post that interview. I got so tired last night I fell asleep. Um, but this is an air ambulance and it's pretty amazing. Basically, this thing saves lives. Um, you know, we carry people, carry people parts, i.e. organs. And he was like going through the process of when you transport an organ and what a time that has to take for it to work. And they have a machine that can make the heart beat outside of the human body. I think it increases the time by like four hours. So oftentimes when you think about aviation, you don't think about stuff like that. You just think about flying home to see your parents, see your family or something like that. But there's a lot more that goes on in the back end uh, to do that. So it hasn't changed much since Sunday, I guess. There's the Palatus here. The KLM airplane is still here. The E2 that you see here will be flying later. And, um, I didn't post any videos from yesterday, but I'll try to do that for today. And I was trying to remember the name of the, the pilot that crossed the Atlantic first. It's Charles Lindbergh. And this is the place he landed. The plot that used to be in here I can't find it, so I don't know where it is. I think they removed it, but it used to be a plaque. That's like on the ground, somewhere there. This is the Embraer Prophet Hunter. Now Embraer has forged into military, because I guess that's where the money is. And so they've created this um, airplane here. Very similar to this, it's called the C390 Millennium. It's very similar to the C-17, um, the A-400, and it's a nifty little airplane. Yesterday I tried to tour the KLM airplane, but they said it was full. Um, Boeing has been very quiet at the air show, yeah, which makes sense. Uh, meanwhile, Airbus is just basically raking in the orders. That's C-390. And one of the most significant order is Lot, Polish Airlines. They've ordered A220s. Now Lot is a Boeing customer. And they've ordered A220s. The irony of Lot ordering both uh, A220s is that I think at one point, Boeing had a chance to buy uh, the Bombardier group that created the A220s. Because the A220 used to be, I think it's the CS300, I think is what it was. Um, but they ended up not doing that. And so the industry is, you know, if if you had a crystal ball, <laughs> so this is the only Boeing airplane that's, uh, I shouldn't say the only, 797 is here from Riyadh, 
And basically this is where I promote in their new library. Can't go in, can't make appointments, nothing. Uh, so they, they've, that's it, this, this is it, this is all they have. Um, there is a Boeing 777-300ER from Qatar, but it's Qatar that's taking care of the marketing for that. Um, as we come down here to the Airbus stand, on the left is, this wasn't here when I first did the video. This is the Saudi. Um, so it looks like a CRJ, right? And that's because it is a Bombardier 600, which is a private jet and they created it, it's called the Global Eye, and they created um, this version for the Saudi military. Kind of stuff you don't really see. <laughs> um, it's based on the Bombardier 6000. I think I said 600, but this is 6000. Uh, and it's by invitation only. I don't have any invitation, so I won't be able to go in. I saw the marketing lady a few days ago, and I should have just said, hey, I need to go check it out. So yesterday we had a chance to go see the JetBlue airplane, which they flew over. Um, he said they did 60, I guess, it's not ETOPS, which means it can fly, it needs like 180 miles. They did 60, 60 minutes, sorry, 180 minutes. They did 60 minutes. So they were within 60 minutes of any airport at any time. So they basically hugged the North Atlantic and then when they got to Iceland, they skipped over to Scotland and then flew down. And this is because this airplane is not certified to fly over water longer. Uh, they, it's called a the um, the ETOPS e -T -O -P -S, extended over water operations. I say that wrong, but that's in essence what it does. So this is what I wanted to go in today at nine. However, it is now ten <laughs> nine fifty six. So that window has closed. This little helicopter was flying yesterday. This helicopter flies like an airplane. It's really fast. Um, and so it was interesting to see it uh, fly and hopefully it'll fly again today. And that's the A350. All the US military stuff is on that side, the rear air. Zoom in, A321 is over there. The 777 300ER from Boeing is there. So it's interesting when you when you go to these markets, it's a whole marketing thing, right? If you're in marketing, I actually encourage you to visit the uh, the air show. And it's because you learn so much, a little train takes you around. You learn so much listening to these guys. Like when we were talking to the marketing guy yesterday, he was trying to tell me why the shipping was better than the 777. And the 777 person would, would do exactly the same, right? They would also tell you why this is so different and why it's better than the, um, why the A350 better than the 777 300 ER or the A350 1000. And you know, this normally, it's wider, um, it's more capacity, more fuel efficient, and so that's the type of stuff. Now they were made in two different eras, so yes, the fuel efficiency is going to be different because the engines are different, and they've changed the technology since they were initially initially built. But it is interesting to, to listen to the marketing. So if you're in marketing, this is really the place to go because you see so many examples of how things are marketed differently. And, and it's worthwhile to come see that. So, we're at the Airbus booth. Oh, merci, monsieur. We're at the Airbus booth. And uh, thank you for walking with me this morning. Thank you for listening to my shenanigans. And this is given the idea, and, and the, this, is the, this is the other side. There's a lot of booths here. And there's a lot of money here. So, every, this is talking about marketing, right? Everyone here is catering to the customer.
and they are whining and dining literally these customers when they come in here that's what these chalets are all about and so that's why I think coming to here to do a marketing would be amazing. See all these fancy cars that picks people up, um, ushers them through the security thing, that special gates that get, they go through. It's all the whole line of Mercedes, some electric ones. Um, I, don't, I don't think Acura is not a thing here, but they have all the top end of the car. It's mostly Mercedes <laughs> that you're gonna see here. Uh, but all right, um, this is Carwin from passbar.com, cruisenotthrough.com. Signing off for today, uh, give you a walkthrough of how we do things in, in, um, at the airship.